Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Naomi and today I'm going to introduce you to taking off. Uh, there are those students who have been watching our videos and they are asking me uh, what is really this taking off. They really want to understand it and uh, they want to know the rules. Uh, what happens on a dimension paper? How do you fill these dimensions? So I will start by introducing taking off is the process of reading off dimensions from drawings and writing them down in a specific order on a special paper called a dimension paper and inserting an appropriate description. If you can see in our screen, uh, this one is our takeoff sheet. This is a takeoff sheet and this sheet uh, whenever we are taking off you are required to divide your paper in these columns uh, we have the first column here we have the second the third they are small then this one is the fourth column one two three again and then the fourth column so uh, taking off happens on the dimension paper and as you can see uh, we write down dimensions the dimensions we get from drawings so when you are getting those dimensions from the drawing and inserting them in the dimension paper, that process is called taking off. So uh, when we are entering these dimensions, you're supposed to follow a specific order. And that order, I'm going to explain it today. So the traditional approach to measurements involves starting with recording dimensions on traditional dimension or taking off paper. So this paper is called a dimension or a taking off in the dimension paper, you may be asking yourselves, uh, what uh, are these four columns for? We have the first column here. It's called the time scene column. This is where multiplying figures are entered when there is more than one particular item being measured. For example, if you have two windows, you will write two times. Uh, if you see a takeoff sheet, the way we enter dimensions, you have to uh, look at how we are entering them eh, and just learn. For example, we don't use multiplication sign, but we use a stroke. So in the time scene column, we just write uh, the number of times you want to multiply, then a stroke. We have then the second column, which is called the dimension column. The dimension paper column is where we enter the dimensions. After lifting them from the drawings, we enter our dimensions in the second column. I'm going to explain to you how you insert these dimensions. The third column is called the squaring column. Here is where you write the answer. After multiplying, you will write your answer in the squaring column. column. Sorry. Uh, in the fourth column, this is the description column. Here it's where you describe uh, each item to be entered. Here you give instructions on what you want. For example, you're doing site clearance. You give clear descriptions as a quantity surveyor, uh, telling them to what dimension they should clear the site. Uh -huh. In case maybe there's a certain, to a certain depth you specify here in the description column. Also, in the description column, it's where waste calculations take place. Waste calculations are calculations in preparation to be inserted in the description column. So here it's where you do the uh, calculations before you continue to the to enter them in the uh, dimension column. Okay, so uh, when we are entering dimensions, we say that you're booking. Okay, uh, when you're booking, there's a certain order that you're supposed to enter the dimensions in the dimension column. For example, if you have measured a cubic uh, measurement, you will start with length, you will go to width, then you go to depth. In that order, you cannot change the order. If you are measuring an area, when you're measuring the area, you will start with the length, then the width. Uh -huh. Then what about if you're measuring linear measurements, for example, some length, for example, formwork, you just write the length, then you underline, uh -huh, under it. Uh, we shall look uh, at it in more details. Uh, this represents an item which is repeated six times, you see? Uh, like this one. If it's it's repeated six times, you can write six times one. The answer is six. Uh huh. Or you can just write six here and six. If the length is eight meters, you just fill it in the dimension column eight. Then in the squaring column, it's eight. Uh, yeah. If the lengths are eight and two meters added together, so you write eight, you underline. Then two, you underline. Then eight plus two 
If you underline under the dimension, it means that we are adding them. So you get 10. Then you uh, in the squaring column, you you can just put uh, two lines, one above, one below. You can just do the one below. Okay, then uh, in the area of, an example, area of 16 square meters with sides of 8 and 2 meters. Uh -huh. So the rectangle maybe was 8 meters by 2 meters. So after you multiply, you get 16 meters as the area. You write it in the squaring column. So area totaling to, totaling to 31 square meters. So if we first do the length, the width, uh -huh. 8 times 2, we get 16. Uh -huh. Then we go to the other uh, maybe rectangle, which is length is 3, width is 5. Then the area is 15. Okay, once you get 16 and 15, now you can add them in the squaring column. You add both of them. Okay, these are examples so that you can be able to understand this thing very clearly. A volume of 48 cubic meters consisting of length, 8 meters, length, width, and uh, depth. So to find the volume, you multiply 8, 8 by 2 by 3. You get 48, you write it in the squaring column. Two volumes totaling to that 66 cubic meters. So you start with length, width, depth. Uh huh. Length, width, depth. Then after you write both answers in the squaring column, then you can add them and get 66. I hope. Another example the line separating the dimensions indicate three separate linear measurements totaling to that in. Linear meter. So whenever you underline dimensions, it means that we they are separate and we should only add them. We should not multiply them. But if we don't have the lines under them, we should multiply. We should assume this is length, uh -huh, this is width, this is depth. So it will give us an answer of 40. Okay, an item to be uh, enumerated is usually indicated in one of the following ways. For example, you can write 4 in the dimension column. You can write number 4 or you can write 4 times 1. Okay, this, all this indicates that it is 4 in number. Occasionally, the SMS requires the insertion of an item that is description without a measured quantity, g testing the drainage system. A sum of money is usually estimated and allowed in the BQ. In takeoff, you'll find these things item. What is item? Item is some provisional sum that is usually allowed in the bill of quantity for work that cannot be uh, well measured from the drawings. Because this is a provisional sum. Provisional meaning that it can change. In the take of sheet, we write items. These items uh, are for things like testing the drains. This one we cannot measure from the, from the BQ, how much it will cost, or allowing the bringing plants to site and removing from site. Others could be dewatering the, the, the trenches. We cannot be able to measure it clearly from the drawings, so we need to go to site. But in the BQ, we have to allow some sum of money. So in the take of sheet, we write Hmm. Not better. Dimensions are usually recorded in meters in two decimal places and a line, and a line drawn across the dimension column under each set of figures. This shows, uh, this means that uh, in the takeoff sheet, you see in the dimension column, we write the figures in terms of meters. But when we are calculating them in the description column uh, as waste calculations, we calculate them in millimeters. When we record them in the dimension column, they usually need two, two decimal places. Then a line is drawn across the dimension column under each set of figures. For example, you have measured the first step, uh, the first set. For example, there were two areas. One was five, another one was two. Uh -huh. Assuming, eh, I'll write it here, there were two rectangles, uh -huh. two rectangles here. Uh, sorry, they are rectangles, eh? Four. They were measuring four by three meters. Uh -huh. Then the other one was measuring five by three meters. When you come to the dimension column, you see, uh, the takeoff sheet has the three columns, then the description column. You will write first uh, four in meters, 4.22 decimal places, 4.00. The other one, 3.00. Then you draw a line. Mm -hmm. Then you can measure the other one, 
0.00 and 3.00 then you draw a line so here you'll come and write the answer is 12.00 and this one will be 15.00 good okay uh let's talk about time scene if there were 12 such items maybe there are 12 uh volumes you will write 12 in the time scene column stroke means multiplied by the length the width the depth maybe it was concrete uh the that's maybe it was a column measuring length 3.5 width 2.5 and the depth was 0 0.5 and there were 12 columns so you'll write 12 times you start with the length, the width, the depth. And you have in the description column, remember, you have to write it in meters and to two decimal. If it was subsequently found that four more foundation bases of the same dimensions were to be provided, then a further four could be added. Maybe they were 16 columns, but we measured only 12. Then we found out that we need to add four. We come and add point 0.4. This point means... It's called adding on. Uh -huh. It's dotting on. Dotting on, sorry. It's called not dotting on. If you see a dotting on in the time scene column, it means 12 plus 14. Then we multiply by this length, width, and depth. Good. Uh -huh. We go to abbreviations. In the taking off sheet, take off sheet, you'll find so many different abbreviations and they help you save time whenever you're taking off. So you should be able to understand what they mean. For example, AB means as before. AV dot means average. BWK, brickwork. C stroke C, center to center. Conk dot concrete. They're short forms. Eh? ABD as before described. BS British standards CM cement mortar column call dot column DDT dot deduct look at other short forms DDP deep ditto that which has been said before if we say ditto we mean like above described uh -huh. Exc excavate uh -huh. you can see this one for form work you can see this one for half brick uh huh. Mat dot material n dot e not exceeding rain reinforced. Uh huh. S W D softwood B P C the proof course E O extra over F D N audition G dot L ground level H W D hardwood M dot S mill steel P dot C prime cost R W P rainwater pipe rot means rot. You know, you should be able to get these short forms so that whenever you're doing your takeoff and you use short forms, another person can be able to understand. But you cannot just come up with your own short forms and then uh, expect someone else to understand. So it's good that you study these short forms so that you can be able to use them because they are, they cut across. People understand them in their uh, quantities. Let's look at about grouping of dimensions. Maybe you, you're measuring the same thing in two different items. We always put these, these brackets, meaning we are grouping them. These descriptions serves these two volumes. Remember when you are feeding them in the dimension column, we put them as length, width, height, or depth. Okay. Ending on. Adding on where the same dimensions apply to more than one item, there is a procedure we do that is adding an ampersand sign. You see this sign? This sign is called an ampersand. We take uh, one description, we add an ampersand, we add another de description for the same dimensions. So, for example, we want to render and set to block work walls the same area we could do two coats of emulsion paint plastered walls so because they share the same dimensions we usually do a number side so this one we say it is adding on you may be asked in your exams to explain this term adding on dotting on uh-huh you explain how nil applies so it's good just to to understand deductions how do you do deductions maybe it was a a big rectangle maybe it was a rectangle Mm -hmm. It was such a rectangle. It had uh -huh, such uh -huh, 
then we had you see this was a rectangle sorry this one is one uh -huh. it was measuring from here to here uh -huh. it measures 21.30 30 then from here to here the width measures 20.30 so the total area of the rectangle will be 21.30 times 20.30 but remember you have to deduct this area that is not inside and this area so how do you do it you write the length and the width of the rectangle then you come and deduct this length and this width this length this length and this width so uh you can see so this one is for the first rectangle to be deducted then this one is for the second rectangle to be deducted i hope it's clear so how we do our deductions you first write for the first rectangle then you say deduct detail then you put the length and the width of the first rectangle the length and the width of the second rectangle then we shall get the answer when we are doing the next step, which is abstract. Alteration to dimensions. Uh, whenever you have made a mistake in the takeoff sheet, we don't cancel. We do like this. You will just put a bracket and label nil. So anyone marking your work will just skip that part because they will understand that work is cancelled. You don't cancel. You'll, you you just put uh, do an arrow from where that mistake starts to where it ends, eh? then you do nil. Mm -hmm. That one is when we are uttering dimensions, then you continue with the work below there. As well. uh -huh. Setting of items, it is very important to space your items whenever you're taking off, just in case you forget to do something, you just come and insert to avoid crowding of dimensions because you remember in the take of sheet there's a certain order that we follow when taking off so what if you, you forget something and you want to insert it so you should space your items in the take of sheet so that you can be able to write them uh to write anything that you forgot at the right place and so that they cannot be crowding uh measurement of irregular figures when you are measuring irregular figures uh, for example, we were used to regular figures like a uh, rectangle because we'll write length and width or a square side and side. But what if we are doing the area of a triangle? The area of the triangle is half base height. So you write half in the times in column, stroke means multiplied by, then we do the base, then we do the height. Good. Uh -huh. What if it's a circle and the area of the circle when the diameter is uh, 3 meters? Uh, we know the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you write pi stroke r will be 1.5 r 1.5. Then you will write your answer in the squaring column. About the circumference of a semicircle, which is 3 meters diameter. The circumference of a semicircle is half pi d. So you write a half stroke pi stroke d, which is 3 meters. What about a volume of a cylinder, which is 1 meter diameter and 3 meters height? So, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared L. So, we we'll write pi stroke times in column r 0.5 r 0.5, then L 3 meters. Uh -huh. So, that was all about uh, understanding the take of sheets. In case you have any questions, kindly write them in the comment section. And if you want me to explain anything in anything in the quantity serving field, kindly write it in the comment section. We are looking at your comments and we are working on the videos that you've asked for. So thanks for watching. Kindly remember to give this video a thumbs up and also to subscribe to our channel. And let's keep going. Uh, keep asking us questions in case you have a drawing and you want us to do to help you do take off or you have any other area you want us to cover, you can also send your question via my email, which is linked in the comment section. So all the best in your exams and see you in the next video.